All right, this is Mr. Gillum, and today we're going to talk about uh, parallel lines and proportionality with parallel lines. And specifically, we've been looking at some of the charts um, where a triangle is on top of another triangle, almost. And uh, what we're going to learn is we're going to learn a theorem about um, the proportionality of those types of triangles. And uh, we're going to be able to solve for variables or find missing sides a little easier after this theorem. Okay, the triangle proportionality theorem says that if you have a diagram like this, and A is parallel, this guy right here is parallel to this guy right here, okay, um, then it divides the sides into segments of proportional lengths. So what we knew before is we knew that this triangle right here, AEB and ADC, were proportional. And so we could compare the short side with the long side and the short side of the short triangle with the long side because they were corresponding, and we could find a, a proportion that could help us solve for unknowns or missing lengths. But now we have this nice triangle proportionality theorem that says if these are parallel, which they are, then um, the length from AB to BC, that ratio, when you compare those, is equal to the length from AE to ED. All right, the triangle proportionality theorem. So <clears throat> instead of having to compare AB to the whole AC of the big triangle, or AE to the whole AD, we can just compare the segments and their ratios should be equal. Okay, the triangle proportionality theorem. So we're going to use that to our benefit here, and it says um, in triangle PQR, so PQR, the big triangle, ST is parallel to RQ. Okay, that is labeled clearly for us. If PT equals 7.5, and that's from there there. Um, and TQ equals 3, that little segment right here. Uh, and SR equals 2.5. That's just that little segment right there. Find PS. So this is our unknown. So um, previously what we would have had to have done is say, okay, well I got these two similar triangles. Um, triangle PQ R and it's similar to triangle P T S and when I compare those I would have to say okay well I know that um, the total length here would actually be 10.5 and so I could say um, 7.5 compared to 10.5 would be equal to X compared to this total length which we would have to call X plus 2.5 and then we have this nasty proportion to solve, and we have to cross multiply and do a whole bunch of work with decimals and things like that. Um, distribute twice, uh, combine like terms. Uh, so it would be a little more complicated. And I could do it that way. In fact, maybe it would be better just for me to show you. 7.5x, when I'm distributing, I'm cross multiplying here. 7.5 times 2.5, what would that be? 7.5 times 2.5. 5, 2, 3, 7, 0, 0, 5, 5, 7, 8, 1, 18.75, we'll say, plus 18.75 equals 10.5x. And so these decimals, they're not ideal, but I'm going to work with them anyway, minus 7.5x. Um, and I can solve this equation um, the old-fashioned way. Divide by 3, divide by 3, and ideally we won't use decimals, we'll just do... Um, Hopefully we know that 3 goes into 18 six times, and there's 3 quarters and 75 cents, so 6.25. Or you could, of course, move the decimal place twice on the top and bottom and reduce that fraction. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of different ways we can do it. Um, so we could say this is 6.25. Now, decimals would be more appropriate for a problem like this because we're starting in measurements of decimals, but maybe not so appropriate if we were starting in um, fractions or uh, mixed numbers. Okay, so um, try to use what's appropriate for... Uh, the problem. So 6.25. All right, now that was a lot of work. Um, so instead of doing it the long way, all right, this is how we normally previously we probably would have had to do it. Um, let's use a triangle proportionality theorem. All right, and so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to erase this. So hopefully you got it. If you need to pause it, pause it and get that down. Um, I'm going to relabel all of my information here. Okay, because we are older and smarter and wiser now, we can use the triangle proportionality theorem. This guy is 2.5, and this guy is 7.5, and we have a 3 here. Um, what it says is, um, if we're trying to find this unknown x, we'll just call it x. Uh, all I have to do really is just compare x 
to 2.5. And I can also compare 7.5 to 3. And that will be the same type of thing that's going on. All right, now it will be the same answer when I come out, hopefully. Uh, so in this case, if I cross multiply, 3x equals 18.75. I do remember. And now I can divide by 3, and x, once again, will equal 6.25. So really it's an abbreviation, a simplification of what we know already. Um, but there's a relationship here. Um, if you just compare the side and the the, the uh the additional part and the side and the additional part, the triangle proportionality theorem, um, as you can see, we get the same answer either way. So it's just an abbreviation of what we already know. So let's try it again here and let's actually use the triangle proportionality theorem because that is after all what we're trying to achieve here. We're going to say this guy is 12.5 according to PS, SR is 5, and PT is 15. So if we're looking for TQ, this is my unknown. We'll use a variable X, Y, Z, A, whatever you prefer, lowercase please. Um, and using the triangle proportionality theorem, instead of comparing um, the side of this small triangle with the side of the big triangle, we can just compare the side of the small triangle with the additional side of the big triangle. So I can compare 12.5 with 5, and I can compare 15 with X. And the, since they are similar triangles, we can do this. Um, that's what the triangle proportionality theorem says. So let's just take a look here. In this case, 12.5x equals 75, and divide by 12.5 on both sides. Once again, we started in increments with decimals, so let's go ahead and finish it that way. I, re I like to just prefer, since I don't have a calculator, to change to 750 over 125, and then I can do some reducing. Uh, in this case, x equals, if I say, Five, we would say if I reduce by five, I would have 150 over 25, and then I could reduce again. 150 divided by 25 is six. So in this case, I would say x equals six. All right. Um, so my missing side is six, or you could say TQ, which is really what they're after is six, six units, since there's no unit of measurement in the problem, six units. So. Um, the proportion, triangle proportionality theorem, like I said, it's just an abbreviation. You could solve it the other way, the longer way, if you needed to, but uh, it's good to be efficient and know some of these theorems, especially for standardized tests, things like that. If it's a one-minute problem because you know, you know that theorem, then it's worth it. The converse, on the other hand, basically says it, the opposite way. If the ratios are equal, so if I compare BE to EA and I compare BD to DC, then I know for sure that these must be parallel. All right, so very similar to when we were doing congruent triangles, when we did congruent triangles, the converse was proving lines parallel. Well, same thing here. The converse is the one that proves the lines parallel. So if you have a hard time remembering which one's which, um, the converse for all our side angle or our corresponding and inter alternate interior, all that stuff, it's converse would prove the lines parallel. The actual theorem itself, um, starts with parallel lines and proves angles congruent. So in this case, the similarity proves the lines parallel. All right, so let's just go working backwards now. If triangle DEF, right here, EH is three, and HF is nine, and DG is one third the length of GF. So, okay, so it, that, ooh, it's gonna be a little trickier. DG is one third of GF. Okay, so if we say GF is X, this could be one third X. All right, now if that bothers you, what you could also do is instead you could say, well, if this is one third X and this is X, it'd be the same thing as if this was just X and this was three X, okay? As long as this side is represented, sorry, as long as GF is represented as three times the length of DG, your proportional will be the same, all right? It will, but the way it's written, it makes it sound like, uh, makes it sound more like this would be uh, one-third the length of this guy. Same thing, if this guy was 3x, it'd be x. If it was 6x, it'd be 2x. If it was 9x, it'd be 3x. As long as this proportion is going to make sense, all those fractions reduce the same. But just for the sake of getting this one-third in here, just like the problem says, let's go ahead and do it. Using the converse of the proportionality theorem, we need to determine whether these lines are parallel. Well, they are parallel if and only if the proportion between GF and DG and HF and EH are the same. So let's take a look here. If I say one third X compared to X and three compared to nine, 
Let's see what happens. One third x times nine, or one third of nine is three. So three x equals three x when I find the cross product. I would say that that's a true statement, therefore the fractions are equal. And I know for sure that yes, DE is parallel to GH. Okay, so once again, we're just checking to see if this little guy compared to this big guy and this little guy compared to this big guy are proportional, meaning they have the same ratio. And in this case, they are. Therefore, the converse of proportionality theorem says that these must be parallel. All right, let's take a look at one more here. It says DG is the length of GF. Oh, half the length of GF. So DG is half the length of GF. So I could say that's half of this length, or if I don't like fractions and I'm not good with fractions, I could say this guy's just this guy right here is 2x, and half of that would just be x. So I mean, you have options here if you don't like the fractions, and we can work this one out this way if you'd like, because the fraction of one half to x, or one half x to x, and x to 2x is the same proportion. It's the same thing. Um, eh is 6, hf is 10. And we need to determine if these lines are parallel right here. And to do that, we need to see um, whether or not the side lengths are proportional. So we're going to compare x to 2x, and we're going to compare 6 to 10. So in this case, it says 10x. If I'm doing my cross product, 10x equals 12x. Obviously, that's not a true statement. Unless x is 0, then it could be. But in this case, what we're doing is we're, we're seeing if they're, they're equal. We're not solving this equation. We're seeing if they're equal parts. And, of course, the triangle is not going to have a distance of 0. So that would make no sense, as well as a negative number. It would not make sense. So we just need to make sure that these are equal. And in this case, they are not. They need to be identical. So we know that these lines are not parallel. Not parallel. All right. And for those of you out there that really bothers you that I put x and 2x, if we want to do it the other way, I don't think you're going to like it as much, but we can. Um, we can always compare 1 half x to x and uh, 6 to 10. And once again, half of 10 is 5x, and this time it equals 6x. So um, you can see they're still not equal, and it's just reduced by a factor of 2. All right, so that's really that's it today. Um, the converse of the proportionality theorem and the proportionality theorem.